Hey everyone, it is Friday, September 15th. The time is 9.11 p.m. and the temperature right now is around 16 degrees Celsius. And I am here in the West End. This is Jane Station, or at least it was Jane Station. And this would be Jane Street. And there's a look to the north. Uh, just south of here, the Toronto Ukrainian Festival is taking place. So for this one, I'll be walking east along Bloor Street West through the festival. And then I think I might continue on walking to High Park Station. So as you can see, they've got Bloor Street closed off and there's one of the main stages. I think there's two main stages at the festival. What's interesting, I turned on the traffic layer in Google Maps and it did not show Bloor Street being closed through here. But apparently according to their website, this festival has been running for 27 years and it's billed as North America's most prominent Ukrainian festival. And it will be running between Jane and Runnymede Road. Probably the best view I'll get without wandering in front of others. That is quite the crowd though. Secret. I used to, I know it doesn't look like it right now, but I used to be a Ukrainian dancer myself. And tomorrow I'm going to be teaching a special uh, folk dance class on the street. On the street tomorrow, just uh, about halfway up, there's a, a busker stage at noon. And we're going to be doing traditional Ukrainian folk dances that anybody can enjoy. So come on on, join me tomorrow for the busker stage at noon for traditional Ukrainian folk dance class. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, so I think a choir is taking the stage now. And this festival runs between Friday and Sunday. There's also a Polish festival taking place this weekend. Well, there might be a neat view here down in Roncesvilles, but that one is only on Saturday and Sunday. Passionately, I was going to say professionally, but you will see they also professionally and passionately perform and popularize, that's a tongue twister, Ukrainian choral and pop music in Canada. Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? I remember seeing these guys last year. 
and I think they've grown in size. There's more of them than there were last year. So they need more microphones than they did last year. So it looks like they're ready to go. It's and quite the recording excited. setup they have. Well, up front. Let's give them a round of applause for Nishendo. So an outdoor licensed area. So this festival should feature food and drink, of course. Entertainment at two stages. A craft and artisan market. A children's midway. Cultural, cultural <laughs> pavilions. A sidewalk sale featuring local merchants, as well as buskers and a refreshment garden. The patio at this bar is doing well. Some more goods for sale over there. I've recorded a number of these street festivals this year, but they've all been in daylight. So it's kind of nice to see one in the dark. I believe this is the area of Toronto with the highest concentration of Korean Canadians. And the festival is organized by the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. This is one of two festivals held along this stretch of Bloor every year. There's also Bloor West Fest, which I covered earlier this year, along with Big on Bloor, which is held further to the east of here. Registered nonprofit. Cafe has an outdoor seating area set up. I think this in the Polish festival might be the last of the big street festivals held in the city this year. I'm guessing that's a licensed area behind the fence. I don't see any kids over there.
There's a first aid tent over there. Twelve pierogies for ten bucks. I think I skipped out on this festival last year. I remember doing the one in Roncesvilles. And the classic Tiny Tom Donuts truck is here. There is definitely a good crowd here. And this place has a massive lineup. Can't really get a close look at the goods. Drink from a fruit, one free refill. Hello. Hi. Hi. I, I keep watching you. Oh, well, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Just ran into a viewer. It looks like there's a small stage set up over here. I couldn't get a look at that other barbecue stand, but there's a great view of this one. Pierogies in town, says that sign. So this area is to the west of downtown. What? It's pretty accessible as it's on the subway. What are these? Oh, door of a private house. Oh, look at all the bullet holes. Chilling reminders as to what's going on overseas. Regardless as to your thoughts on what's going on in Ukraine, attacking civilians is completely disgusting and unacceptable under any circumstances. Sure, if the camera's picking those up. Some Cowson Road vibes here in Bloor West Village. And this must be the Midway coming up. Oh, there's 
a rock climbing wall set up. Someone's going for it. <laughs> she said my feet hurt. Impressive stuff. So on this B ride. $30 unlimited ride pass. Uh, one ticket for six bucks. Inflatable super slide. And another stage at the other end of the festival. There's a lot less fanfare at this end. reached the end of the festival. This is Runnymede Road. And you can find Runnymede Station just to the north of Bloor Street West here. I'm gonna continue on through Bloor West Village. and finish up at High Park Station. Things still seem pretty lively just east of the festival. Starbucks is doing a good business. And the subway line runs along Bloor Street, well, west of the Don River. To the east of the Don River, it runs along Danforth. And then it veers north at Victoria Park, up into Scarborough. But Danforth and Blue are the two streets where Line 2 runs along for the most part. West Village it starts at Jane Street where I started this one and it ends at Ellis Park right at High Park or rather Ellis Park Avenue
think she's retired? Yeah, I think she's okay now. Yeah. Yeah. Things are going to be a bit quieter from here on out. There's a classic example of Canadian, Canadiana architecture, the Runnymede branch. Dating back to 1930. And Bloor West Village refers to the stretch along Bloor Street. You might hear people say they live in Bloor West Village, but it's not actually a neighborhood in that sense, unless you live right along Bloor. But it's called that after the business improvement area, Bloor West Village. And there's 66 some odd BIAs throughout the city. believe the neighborhood to the north of Bloor here is called Runnymede and to the south is Swansea. And I'm almost at the end of the West Village. So this is pretty much the same route I took. That guy was pretty much walking on my heels. That's why I stopped there for a second. This is pretty much the route I took when I recorded Bloor West Fest. That was much earlier in the summer, and of course we're at the tail end of it. And the mornings and nights are pretty cool, but the afternoons can still be quite warm. And this is where High Park begins. That bridge there carries the subway tracks. My endurance of my goal is done. For rent, if you're wondering how much it would cost, view it.ca slash B902. I can't see if there's another digit after that. Nope, B902. And since I'm out and it's nighttime, 
I might as well do a nightlife walk downtown. It's been a while since I've done one of those. But yes, it is quite dark through here. The High Park? Or do they want you to say THE High Park? And I could enter the station here. And you know what? It's pretty quiet up ahead. So let's do that. As a westbound train rolls by, I'll come back to this area later in fall and do a walk. Probably I'll couple that with a walk through Hyde Park as the leaves are changing. Also just to the north of here is the Junction neighborhood. That parking garage uses an elevator system. That's something you see a lot of in Asia, but not so much over here. An unmanned entrance. Multiple cards detected. Sure. I'm gonna hop on a westbound train. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this one, walking through the Toronto Ukrainian Festival and Blur West Village on Blur Street. I'm curious to hear your thoughts and comments below. And if you wish to support what I do on YouTube, there are links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides, and there is a super thanks button below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. on this train here, so thank you for watching. The next station is Peel Station. And as always, I will catch you on, I don't know why I said it that way, but I'll catch you on the next one. Yoink!